Hi everyone, thank you for joining me today. I'm Dr. Vita. I work at Cancer Center for Healing and Center for New Medicine. How many of you out there have pets? Or how many of you out there eat sushi? Raise your hand. The reason I'm asking this question is that uh, that's how we are exposed to parasites. We don't necessarily see them, but you could get infected via your dog. For example, if you let your dog kiss you or lick your face or lick your hand and then you don't wash your hand, you end up eating something, that's how you get infected. And how, are you, how is your dog infected? Is by eating an infected fleas or being exposed to a tapeworm and then you go and clean or you touch the urine of the dog that was infected with tapeworm or hook or liver hook fluke you could get it, or hookworms. That's how you can get infected. So, um, and also some of the water is contaminated with protozoa or the cyst. And then unfortunately, a lot of us don't have enough stomach acid to protect us. What's the purpose of stomach acid? A lot of us are taking anti-acid to prevent that stomach acid, but there is always purpose with everything in us. So the stomach acid purposes to be a barrier. So the parasite, the bacteria doesn't cross. And then stomach acid also breaks down your proteins to be able to digest proteins. So people who are on protonics, anti-acid chronically, they have low stomach acid and then they are more prone to parasite infection. And uh, there are four different group, major group of parasite. One is protozoa, so you can see some, most of the time you get it through water. When you travel to Mexico or other countries, you could get it. And then also there's liver fluke, tapeworm, and roundworm. And they can infect other organs in you, or they could be intracellular in your blood in the red blood cell or they could be stuck in your organs they're not necessarily in your gi tract so when you do colonoscopy you never most likely you're not going to see them because they're not going to be in your colon they're going to be inside the tissue maybe in the wall of the bladder or in the pancreas, or in the gallbladder, or in the liver. They could be stuck in many organs and they form these cysts. So a lot of patients out there, when they do an abdominal ultrasound, they come with liver cysts, pancreatic cysts, kidney cysts. All these cysts is due to the parasite, form of parasite. And patient may not have any symptoms. But patients that are being reversed by giving them medication, the cyst is gone when you do ultrasound. So what symptoms does parasite cause and what are parasites? So parasites basically are organisms that live in another host and they suck the nutrients. So they would suck our nutrition. Most of us who have parasite could be iron deficient because our iron gets lowered or we feel fatigue, low energy because they suck our nutrients. What they also do is they produce neurotoxins that can cross the blood brain barrier and cause depression, ADD, all different other schizophrenia, all different <laughs> neurological symptoms. I actually had a patient a few years ago she came to me and she said she'd been seeing many different doctors. She was prescribed antidepressants, anti-anxiolytics. She was taking those two medications. And she also had symptoms of skin rashes. She would get these rashes going to dermatologists, doing skin biopsy. Oh, don't worry. This is just put the steroid cream. Nothing else we have to offer. They did biopsy. They didn't see anything. So then, next thing you know, she had parasite. We treated her with parasite medication, and then she felt much more, much better. Her mood improved. She got off her medication, and she started crying that day, saying, thank you so much for listening to me and treating me for something that no one ever thought about. So, and she had cats. 
that's how she got exposed. She had toxoplasmosis, and that crosses the blood-brain barrier and causes depression, and it can even cause bipolar, it can cause other psychiatric issues. So that was one case. And what other symptom can parasite cause? They can cause IBS, which a lot of people out there have, general conventional doctor, even myself 10 years ago, I would have said, oh, I don't know, maybe it's food allergy. But now we know a lot of IBS symptoms can be due to parasite. They cause bloating, they cause constipation, sometimes diarrhea, all these different symptoms. And also Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, rheumatic arthritis, lupus. I seen a few patients of mine with lupus, which had been having parasite. Getting rid of the parasite, the lupus symptom improved, the ANA antibody got to normal. So it's amazing what parasite can do because it's not the effect only of the parasite, the neurotoxins it produces, that it damages our system, causes leaky gut in our GI tract. So then a lot of patients develop food allergies when they have parasite. So um, and one of the simple way to find out if you have parasites, because if you do a regular diagnostic test, which is what your doctor would say, oh, let's do a stool test for ova and parasite. Do you think then just parasite decide to come out and be shown be positive on the stool test? No, they're stuck in your organs. They don't come out of your system until they're dead. Once you kill them, then you see them out in your stool and sometimes you may not see them. So the way we find out, we do the diagnosis, simple way through blood work, you could find out if the ferritin level keep dropping, dropping without no reason. Patient eats red meat, patient have no periods, eats red meat, no loss of blood, colonoscopy is normal, you still see drop in ferritins, that's usually an organism is sucking it. So then I send them to do a frequency test here with Dr. Bales, is the F-scan to find out, or I'll also do an abdominal ultrasound. Sometimes I find cysts in the liver, sometimes I find cysts in the pancreas, sometimes I find, find cysts in gall, but you know, with different organs. And that's how you could find out. Another way is biomeridian testing, which one of our practitioners, Molly, does it. She checks your acupuncture point and she figures out if you have parasite or not and what medication would work for you. And that way I know, okay, there is three different meds that I can use for this patient. And one of the problems with parasite is you can just get medication once and kill them, think they're gone. So there are eggs that can hatch two weeks later. So if you get a cycle of parasite medication, you take it for a week or 10 days, you may see some worm. And if you don't repeat it next month, that eggs will hatch and be in you again. So the way I treat parasite is cyclic. I usually tell them to start before full moon because that's when parasites are active. So if patients have parasites, Whatever symptom they have, abdominal, bloating, skin rash, irritation, whatever symptom, it gets usually worsened a day, couple of days, or the day of full moon. So if you now you have issue with sleep and you're like, oh, around full moon it's worse, or for example, some people may have rectal itching, it gets worse, whatever symptom you have around full moon, and it's worse, you want to go to your doctor and get treated for parasites. So... I usually give patient medication. I give them, I let them start a few days before full moon and then take them for seven to 10 days. Then take, do a liver enzyme test, make sure it doesn't damage your liver. I had only one case, one patient who the medication elevated his liver enzymes, but we reversed it. We give him medicine supplements like milk thistle or liver protect to reverse the liver function to improve it. And then, you start next cycle, next full moon, a few days before full moon. We repeat it four times, five times, or six times. Usually I stick to four cycles. Then I may give another parasite medication. 
and uh, depending on their ultrasound for example if that shows improvement that's great if it's gone then i'm happy if i still see cysts that are smaller but it's still there that means there is still parasite sometimes they're resistant sometimes i give a sort of antibiotic with antiparasitic because that antibiotic will cut the food supply to parasites so it could help them to start and then you kill them and sometimes they're resistant or sometimes you don't just have liver fluke or roundworm you may have both of them together so these are different things that i have my patient do and then in uh, india for example the doctors some of them have their patient defecate and within 30 minutes, they look at the stool under microscope to see if they have parasite or not. But luckily we have these other testing, frequency testing, biomeridian testing, or even the scan, the ultrasounds that we could figure it out. And um, parasite have enzymes. I had many patients who send their stool with parasite to the lab to see what kind of parasite it is. The result came negative because they digest themselves, they disappear. After 30 minutes of defecating, they break themselves down. Some patient, while taking the medicine, may feel flu-like symptom, may feel abdominal bloating during it, or maybe during the medication, they may not feel anything, but after they feel like they had the flu, they had the body talk, body ache. All these, uh, it's because of the toxins of the parasite too and the die off of parasite. So one trick is to take vitamin C. You take vitamin C about 1,000 to 2,000 milligram, maybe five times a day, up to 10 gram a day. If you do develop diarrhea, that means you saturated your vitamin C next dose, next day, just do less vitamin C. And um, yeah, and the medication that I use, oh, I used to use natural, like warm wood. I would tell a patient eat garlic or give natural or um, clove for a patient, treating them with natural stuff. But then patient would see the parasite come out for two, three, four years, but still have them. So natural, a lot of people are doing parasite cleanses, stuff like that. It's great. You could see them come out. Maybe you, when you know you have parasite, then go to your doctor, get the medication. And uh, there's a great Facebook uh, page that uh, there is a parasite group that people go and um, a lot of people have... Uh, pictures or skin rashes that was misdiagnosed and after taking the medication all the symptoms went away and even in some cases some people are even using their dog dewormer for anti-cancer benefit but i personally don't recommend taking a dog um, medication i rather you guys do it human dose medication but it has been used like albendazole or mebendazole has been used in terms of cancer too in terms of attacking cancer stem cells um so i hope this short talk helped you guys to go see your primary care if you have cysts in your liver in your organs the organs that is not related to parasite is breast cyst and ovarian cyst or thyroid cyst they're not related to parasite so ovarian cyst and um, breast cyst is tend to be due to iodine deficiency and hormonal imbalance excess estrogen to little progesterone and thyroid cyst tend to be just due to iodine deficiency so but other than that rest of the cysts in the body or hemangiomas like they see a benign tumor like in the liver or organs they are related to parasite so thank you for joining me tonight have a great day bye